Hey, my friends, I'm Dr. Titus Chu, and this is The Modern Brain. This is part three of our three-part mini-series on brain trauma. In a previous video, we talked about what trauma does to your brain and nervous system. In this video, I'll be teaching you what trauma does to your immune system, how that can become a vicious cycle, and three simple things you can do about it. In part one, I taught you what trauma does to your nervous system. As a quick review, your brain goes into state of crisis mode of red alert, and it enters what's known as a fight or flight response, where you can experience increased blood pressure, pulse, you might sweat a bit, and your pupils will dilate. As a quick side note, the reason why your pupils dilate and get big like that is because when you're under stress or your brain or body are being threatened, you need enough light to come in so you can see what you're up against or you can see a clear path to run away from, right? The fight or flight response. And as you learned before, that's actually a normal response that's good and it's useful because it help you deal with stressors when they come up. But if the trauma is too much for your nervous system to handle at that time, it could then get stuck in this crisis mode. And that becomes the first vicious cycle. The second reason why people can get stuck in a vicious trauma cycle is because not only does your nervous system and brain enter a state of crisis mode when you experience trauma, but so does your immune system. Let me break it down for you. Your immune system is in charge of a bunch of different things in your brain and body, but the number one function for our conversation is protection. Your immune system helps protect your brain and body from different types of invaders, things like bacteria, viruses, as well as parasites. <laughs> the way your immune system is able to do that is comprised of a bunch of different specialized cells, and they all have different functions to help neutralize those different pathogens and invaders. The interesting thing is, not only does your immune system help protect your body from all these different invaders and pathogens, but it also protects your brain. And one of the major immune cells of your nervous system is what we call the microglia. As you can see here, I drew a little picture of the microglia for you. And the reason why I did so, because the way it looks will help you remember what its main function is when the microglia is in a happy, healthy state. It helps to clean up debris that builds up over time in your nervous system from exposure to stress or toxins, things of that nature. Now, this is the microglia when it's happy and healthy. And as you can see with all the little arms and legs it has here, it's able to actually crawl around your brain. Think about that, as we speak right now, these microglia are crawling around your brain. <laughs> But that's a good thing because what they're doing is actually cleaning up the debris and the gunk of your everyday brain activities that builds up over time. And again, the important point to remember is if it's happy and healthy. But after trauma, your microglia change and transform not only how they look like, but also what they do. In states of chronic stress or inflammation or after trauma, if healing doesn't happen, your microglia change their shape and end up looking like this guy here. And as you can see, it's lost its legs, it's lost its arms, it can't crawl around your brain anymore. So what does it do? It just hunkers down and creates a massive inflammatory response in your nervous system. That is one of the major hidden forces keeping your brain from healing from trauma. It's the second vicious cycle. The good news is that all is not lost. Even if your microglia become irritated and activated, there's things we can do to help calm it down and appease and pacify it. The most important thing is to figure out what are the other sources of inflammation in your body or in your nervous system that are triggering it and irritating your microglia. But in the meantime, one foundational strategy you can take is to simply lower your inflammation levels. Here are three simple ways of doing that. Number one, through an anti-inflammatory diet. Number two, by taking supplements that help lower inflammation, such as omega-3 fatty acids. And finally, number three, 
make sure your vitamin D levels are optimal. And so there you have it, three simple things that you can do to help calm your microglia and break that inflammatory vicious cycle that makes so many people get stuck in states of perpetual stress, survival mode, and trauma. If you try out these foundational strategies and they seem to help a bit, but you're still struggling, then be sure to reach out to a brain specialist to help you identify the other sources of inflammation in your body as well as nervous system. Because when you finally get to the root cause for why you're still struggling and stuck in that vicious trauma cycle, there's so much you can do to turn your health and your life around. If you enjoy this three-part mini-series on brain trauma, subscribe to my YouTube channel where I'm constantly updating it with information to empower you to heal your brain and transform your life. And be sure to share it with at least one friend. My name is Dr. Titus Chu. Thanks so much for joining me. This has been The Modern Brain.